we went to the same school, St Dunstan's College, uh, in a place called Catford, which is like... Um, ghetto of South Wales. Yeah, basically, yeah. It's right on this big road called the South Circular. Quite a few years later, probably 1995, yeah, well, we were, yeah, 94, 95. So the car going to, to um, Metalheads? Yeah, <laughs> which was um, a drum and bass club at the time. Um, and uh, we just got chatting about music and we kind of had similar tastes. We were really into lots of new music coming out and we were into, really into yeah, old both, disco yeah. and stuff like that. And then we... Both going, both into going to car boot sales and digging and stuff. So. We, hit, we kind of hit it off really, really quickly and then we started hanging out all the time and we'd go cycling and look, go looking for records and I used to hang, Matt was making music at the time in, um, also in... Yeah, in Catford. Catford. <laughs> so I'd go and hang out in the studio and, you know, we'd just kind of, you know, listen to music and I'd sat in, and, you know, in the, in the studio with him while he was producing. And, you know, playing each other stuff that we liked, turning each other on to music, and that's kind of how we started, I suppose. But we never ever thought we'd make music that was never kind of on the cards. The name came from, I think we were obviously inspired by the Martin Denny album, which is like this classic exotica record called Quiet Village. Was oh, it Martin Denny or Les Baxter? I forget. It's I think Martin it's Denny. Martin Denny. And it, and it just sounded right. Um, you know, it kind of invoked a spirit of this forgotten town where, you know, we could maybe... Uh, you know that all these these strange characters could live and make. You know, I when we thought about a website and we could have the village as the kind of focal point, and you, mm. you know, so it just seemed to fit the music that we were making or the sound that we were making. Yeah. You know, slightly easy listening, slightly exotic, world world sounding. As yeah, well. exactly, and yeah, not definitely definable world sounding, by yeah. the country, I think, or yeah. you know, or, yeah. Or, I just don't like the word retro. I think that re retro is a bit more obvious and maybe not, not tacky, but it makes it kind of cheapens it in a way. Um, I think that I don't, I don't want to name other artists that maybe are retro, uh, but I don't know. I, I think that it's Difficult. I know there's a fine line, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I suppose I see retro, and I think of you know Austin Powers. I don't know. Yeah. I think yeah. With the with the QB the sound, I think we, there's a really distinct sort of. Uh, well, we know ex exactly what we want. What, what, what we want, and we you know which tracks or what what, thing, what sounds will work. I think we can reject stuff pretty quickly. Mm. That's definitely what we did. Yeah, which is, you know, a lot of it is rejecting rather than creating, I think. Balearic um, spirit, I think. Um, I think Balearic music is, you know, kind of part of what we grew up yeah. with. I think we we were, we were. I mean, we've been into Balearic that that well, that sound since I mean the late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, I mean, how do you maybe just a bit of background? How you describe Balearic? I, I would describe it as pop, pop. A lot of it as pop music, as really like well produced, emotive. Pop, sometimes, draw, drawn sometimes out, cheesy. drawn out pop songs that that worked uh, on or worked in, in a club format, you know, in a, in a club environment. And a lot of it is, you know, a lot of it's. This is what I think a lot of people 
people always these days search, try and search for the most obscure, weirdest Italo or you know kraut that rock, and they miss the point. You know that there was all the, the, a lot of the records that were played were these oh, really cool, obvious, really obvious, and they were pop tracks that were popular in the Mediterranean. Um, so. Like City I think, Lights and yeah. you know, Josephine and you know, all these amazing pop tracks. The thing about that sound is that it crosses into so many other things that we're into. So, film music, I mean, we've been into yeah, sound yeah, yeah. for the for like the longest time, you know. Yeah. And just, yeah, I mean, it's kind of. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> With, with the with the QB thing, I mean, hopefully we're looking at a totally you know new new audience, you know, and we really want to break out of this small you know well you know whether would be at this sort of uh, supposedly new disco or Balearic scene, you know, we, we hope that this this album's going to be a, will be a crossover success and be commercially sort of. You know, it's more successful. Yeah. Well, that's a, Definitely like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Boys, yeah. yeah with, without that, because it's not. A, you know, we'd really like it to be a record that. You know, I'd, I'd people um, would, would sound great for people to play at a dinner party, yeah. or for people to play when they come back from a club, or people to play. You know, in the car, you know, on a long car journey or something. You know, so it's, it's not. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping. My, I think it's something that I can actually play to my parents because yeah. I, I don't yeah. think I could play my parents most of the stuff I make. It's radio <laughs> stuff. I just don't think they get it. Yeah. <laughs>